everyone. Today is an exciting day. The Lieutenant Governor and I, as joined by Secretary Piandaka, are thrilled to introduce the people of Massachusetts to your new General Manager of the MBTA, Bill A. After a comprehensive search, it's clear that Bill is the proven leader that the team needs to improve safety and reliability across the entire system, and also to restore the public's trust. He comes to us with nearly 40 years of experience as an engineer, as a transportation professional at the federal, state, and local level. This has included serving as president of the Long Island Railroad and interim president of New York City Transit. Bill has managed multi-billion dollar budgets, tens of thousands of employees, but what really stood out to all of us in the search process is that he has a proven track record of taking on challenging problems, taking over the reins of transit systems in times of crises, and turning them around. He stepped into the role of interim president of the New York City Transit during the transitional period when the aging infrastructure of the system was reaching a crisis point and needed to be restored. Phil Dobin had first to this challenge uh, initiating something called the Subway Action Plan, which dramatically turned around performance and reduced the number of safe, safety incidents on the subway lines. Later, he took over as president of the Long Island Railroad. This was at a time when the system was experiencing its worst on-time performance in decades. Once again, Phil jumped in, uh, brought the railroad up to where it needed to be, uh, including having the most consistent on-time performance in its history. He did this by prioritizing communication and not shying away from innovative solutions. That included installing new technology on all trains so that arrival times on the platforms and in the mobile app were more accurate. And these are just examples of what we know Phil will do here and why we have picked him for this important job. He recognizes and understands the challenges that we face. He understands the urgency with which we must act and he's ready to take on the challenge as he has throughout his career. Phil is a commuter. He actually rode uh, the T over here this afternoon and has a firsthand understanding of what disruption means to, to people's lives. He recognizes, he recognizes the importance of getting this right and to be clear about communicating with the public. I know that Phil is really excited to continue his commitment to getting out to stations, to speak to riders and workers as he has already done here today, um, and to be the problem-solving leader that the MBTA needs in this transformative moment. We look forward to the work that he and the team will accomplish together. And I also want to say, speaking of team, uh, huge gratitude to Jeff Donneville, who's had a distinguished career here for 22 years at the T. Uh, most recently, he stepped forward to serve as our interim general manager, um, and we are grateful for that. He also, during that time, ushered in, as I think you noted, noted, an, an era of transparency and communication 
that we haven't seen before, and I know that uh, Phil will continue to build on that. I am also grateful that Jeff is going to continue to stay on and serve on the leadership team. But right now, I'm very happy to introduce our Secretary of Transportation, Gina Fiandaka, to say a few words. Well, thank you, Governor, and good afternoon. Governor Hilly, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, MBTA employees, and members of the media who are here today. This is such a huge pleasure to stand before you for this announcement. Today, we really are celebrating. This is the start of a new day at the MBTA, a day of hope, a day of promise, and a day where we start to build a team who will put the MBTA on a path forward to being safer and more reliable. I want to thank the members of the search committee for casting a wide net for qualified applicants for this position, and I want to thank the governor and the lieutenant governor for their support during this search process. We did evaluate a variety of individuals and their record of accomplishments, and they, there were many who seemed to qualify. But what stood out to us about Phil Ed, he has a passion for public transportation. He has the skills, the knowledge, the operational experience, the financial accomplishments, and he is clearly going to be someone who will hit the ground running. The search committee wanted someone who could walk in the door on day one and size up the situation. Bill Eng, far and away, is someone who has the experience to age quickly, but needs to be done to transform the MBTA and then bring the workforce along with him to be successful. He understands that all of us have a sense of urgency, that there's been growing frustration about the speed restrictions, the condition of stations, project delays, and the vital need to hire staff to get new vehicles into service. Phil understands all of that and more because for more than 35 years, he's held senior management roles in the field of transportation, in a tough urban environment, just like Boston, with old infrastructure, just like Boston, and in a transit area that millions of people rely upon every day, just like Boston. And Phil is a leader who's managed over 50,000 employees. So he's basically done it all. He's risen up through the ranks of the New York, in the New York City Transit Agency. He comes to us with a civil engineering degree from Cooper University of New York. He was president of the Long Island Railroad, interim president and chief operating officer of the Metropolitan Transit Authority in New York positions with the New York State DOT, where he managed finance and budget and operations, everything that goes into running a world-class transit agency. And in his career, Phil has also managed literally billions of dollars worth of capital projects. Construction for the third rail along 10 miles of the Long Island Railroad, an $11 billion project to connect the Long Island Railroad to the east side of Manhattan's Grand Central Terminal, and being a key leader in the management team to expand Penn Station at Monaghan Train Hall, and the team that replaced the Tappan Zee Bridge with the Cuomo Bridge, which is a $4 billion project. Bill is an engineer by trade, but he owns the building blocks for a successful transportation system. But they aren't just physical assets, like new tracks and trains and tunnels. What Phil brings to this position is an appreciation for the building blocks of the, the people. The people we serve, the people who work for the MBTA, and the important stakeholders in our community, our municipal leaders, our business leaders, that it takes everyone working together to build a successful transit system. Phil will improve the MBTA customer communications and take, take the staff and build partnerships, which is what this administration is all about. He has a long career that focuses on customer satisfaction, operational excellence, and taking steps to create the transportation system that is safe and reliable and that our riders deserve to depend upon. We look forward to having Phil Lang at our side to guide us and to support these improvements at the MBTA, and I can't be more thrilled to welcome him to the Mass DOT family. So with that, we we'll to welcome Phil to the board.
Good afternoon, Massachusetts. Thank you, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, and Secretary Fiandaka, for placing your trust in me to lead the MBTA. I'd like to start off by addressing the big elephant in the room. No, I'm not a Yankee fan. <laughs> um, I'm very happy to be here with some of my family uh, today. My wife, Carol, my daughter, Catherine, who, by the way, is a senior at Northeastern University, and I'm proud to be saying that she'll be working here in Foxborough as a biomedical engineer in Massachusetts. And I'm also an engineer, like her, and a public transportation aficionado with 40 years of experience. I take great pride in public service, and I cherish the opportunity to again work in public transportation, as it is vital to the public, their quality of life, and our economy. But when it's not functioning the way it should, when it's not safe and it's not reliable, everyone suffers. It's clear that the MBTA service is not at the level that it needs to be, and it hasn't been that way for far too long. It's time for a new way of doing business at the T. Being an engineer, so whenever I see problems, I have a need to solve it. I have a need to fix it. The status quo is not acceptable. And moving forward, we will be innovative, open to new ideas, and think of outside of the box solutions. But this is also about bringing back the basics. Our job starts with making sure the T is safe and reliable, especially when it comes to communication. As a creator myself, I know how frustrating it is when you can't get accurate information about when your train is arriving, when it's delayed, and how long that delay may be. This is an issue I confronted head on at Long Island Railroad, and I intend to do the same here. We owe it to our customers to give them accurate and straightforward information so they can plan their commutes. Riders will come to know me very well. I've heard this may be taboo here in Boston, but I genuinely welcome people to talk to me if you see me on the subway, on the bus, on the train. And I'm going to come to you as well, visiting stations, visiting communities across our entire service area. And today, I had a proud opportunity to visit MassDOT and MBTA and meet with so many of the proud workforce that serves the public here. And I want to say something directly to those that I have not yet met at the MBTA. I couldn't be more excited about this, and I hope you are too. Yes, we have many challenges in front of us, but there are also opportunities in front of us. I want to empower the staff. I want them to embrace innovative solutions. And you have my word that I'm going to work day in and day out to make sure you have the work environment you need, that you deserve, so we can give the public the safe and reliable transportation service that they deserve. And to anyone who might be considering a job at MBTA, I invite you to join us. But this is a once-in-a-lifetime generational opportunity. It transforms people's lives. It impacts millions of people every day. There are great careers with good pay and benefits and fantastic advancement opportunities. Public service is so rewarding. We want you as part of the MBTA family. There's no question that the challenges before us are great, and we will tackle them together. With a strong team, a sense of urgency, and an unwavering commitment, to customer service, I know we can and will overcome them. It's not going to happen overnight, but my pledge to the people of Massachusetts is that you will see meaningful, measurable steps being taken and progress being made in short order. Governor Healy has placed her trust in me. Now I'm going to work every day to earn the trust of the people of Massachusetts. Thank you very much. Well, one thing I can say is that um, the workforce that I met today and the workforce that I know exists, they do tremendous work. I am a people person. What I'm looking to do, and I will do it, is, and I did this at Long Island Railroad, I did this when I was in New York City Transit, um, and we did this actually when I was COO because it was the so-called summer of hell and Amtrak had tremendous track issues in Penn Station, is you need to empower people. You need to go in and find the skill sets um, folks and free them up to do their jobs, right? 
we need to take a look at how we organ organization is set up, um, and we've been able to do that in my past endeavors, and I'm going to do that here. People are ready to step up. People are ready to deliver. There's so much pride. What they need, and I'm going to give them, is the support, the direction, and the tools. And it's going to be open communication with them, just like pledge to the public. So I, I know that we're going to turn this around. Could someone else have done it? I'm sure others can do it. But I'm, I'm very engaged. I'm all in. And I'm looking forward to the challenge. And we're going to do it together. The whole team, Governor Healy and her team, their support, that was big in me saying yes to this job. Uh, but no, moving forward, the folks behind me and the folks that are out there right now providing service, we're going to do it together. Mr. Eng, what's the first thing you plan to do? What's the first thing you plan to do? What's your priority day one, April 10th, Mr. Eng? You know what? Everything is the number one priority, and that's one of the fun things about the challenge that we have ahead of us. Safety is a top priority. That is every day, and we cannot forget that, right? Communication is a priority, and we cannot forget that. And I mean that, as I mentioned, with the public, with the communities, with the workforce, with the laborers. Where are they? Here they are, right? The unions. We're in this together. Um, infrastructure, state of good repair, maintenance, uh, capital projects. You have to have a balanced program. You need to focus on the critical things that are going to provide a safe, reliable system. But at the same time, we need to find a way to balance the needs so we can build a safe, reliable service for today's users and for the future generations. So it's it's all of the above, and we're going to do all of them. From what, what you've seen, how it's getting the staff you need, the dispatchers. I know the governor's got a priority there. Um, is there going to be money to pay people more, or how do you tackle that problem? Well, I've been following that, uh, I am, and I'm thankful for the governor's support in terms of the, the staffing needs and the funding needs of the MBTA. Um, but some of the other things, in addition to staffing and uh, staffing and hiring, is that how do I make the jobs easier for staff today, right? Take a look at our processes. Do we, how many steps do we have to get something done? Is there a way to streamline that, right? To get to the finish line sooner. So many times in public service, we set things up in a way, and it makes sense, and we've been doing it for years and years and years, but there's ways that you can do things quicker, and I need to empower staff. I need to make sure that they know that they have my support, and if it's a tough decision, I'll help make that decision. I'm going to be accountable for what we do moving forward, um, and they need to know that I have their back. Mr. E, from, from what you've seen, how would you describe, how would you rank our transit system here in Greater Boston? It's the best transit system in the world, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> Is that, are you being serious, or are you, are you being We are sarcastic? going to work every day to provide the service that the public expects. I had the chance to talk to a lot of riders today, and while they are frustrated, they love riding the T. Um, they are looking forward to us making positive steps, and, and once we start to show that, I think the riders, the frustrations that people are feeling, It'll start to turn. It took a little bit of time at Long Island Railroad, but it did turn. And the other thing that the public loves is if there's communication and it's two-way and we're listening, then that means we're going to be providing them the service that they need. Right? It's not the service I think they need, it's the service that they want and need. Plus, I'll be writing it too, so it's the service that I want and need. So, that's, that's what I believe in. When working for the Long Island Railway and the MTA, what was one thing that you saw happen there that you don't want to see happen here, or do want to see happen here? Well, you know, at those locations, a lot of the things that I don't want to see happen happened before I got there. I actually stepped in, and I had the, I don't know if you want to call it a pleasure, but I enjoyed the challenge of taking it on when it was probably at its worst conditions in the past, right? And I think a lot of things I've read about here um, a neglect of the system, uh, perhaps uh, disinvestment of maintenance and state of good repair. Uh, that has led to some of the conditions I had when I took on the role as interim president of New York City Transit. That $836 million subway action plan covered everything that needed to be addressed, and we accelerated that work. Um, and, and putting that foundation in place for the next president was key, and I was very proud to be part of that. When I took over Long Island Railroad, as, as I think the secretary mentioned and the governor mentioned, it is the worst on-time performance in decades. It had these similar kind of concerns from the riding public 
a lot of this trust of the of the workforce, a lot of this trust of the service, um, and people were, were taking their cars and driving. Uh, little by little, we invested in the key things that were causing the most delays to the public. Um, we were not only fixing them, we were addressing the root cause of what created those issues, right? And sometimes you need to spend some money to save some money, and we were doing that. And it was not just a list of things to fix, it was a tra oh, culture trade uh, change with a new sense of urgency, which get, became embedded in the managers, became the workforce. They felt so much pride in what they were doing. They stepped up and they delivered. In fact, during the pandemic, we delivered more state of good repair in our history, uh, getting the system where it is. And, and it's true. It's not only good service that they were providing, but it was consistent month to month, January, February, March, and December. And once it's consistent, and it's robust, and it's reliable, I think we've, we've done a pretty good job. And we're going to do that here. Mr. Does he have the uh, resources that it needs for you to execute this turnaround improvements? And are you confident that the governor and her team will be a receptive audience if you go to them and ask for more money? Well, the resources that we have, and I'll, I'll say this, I'm going to work with whatever resources are here with you, right? It's going to be my job to figure out how to deliver what we need to do. And again, balancing the need for the priority work, balancing the need for future capital work, and making tough decisions when, when the budget is tight. I'm, I'm going to be relying on the governor's support. I, I firmly believe it's there. I know the, the funding is there. Um, but I'm not going to use that as an excuse not to deliver. Uh, I need to help figure that out. I need to find a way, as I said earlier, how do I get the workforce, the managers, the tools, the direction that they need so we can deliver to the public? Mr. Eng, uh, are you going to bring your own? Are you going to bring your own leadership team in, or is it just you coming in? It's just me. Um, you know, the team that's behind me, the team. Um, what they're going to need is us working together, right? I've had to evaluate. Um, certainly, if there's experienced folks that we need, and I know talking to Jeff, there are some key positions that are open. If they're willing to come over, I'm going to be looking for them. I also know it's a challenge to relocate your family and, and take on new roles. But you know what? When we build some momentum, I think people are going to want to get on this train and come with us for a ride. It's, it's really an exciting time to be here. And there's nothing better when you take on a task like this, and you turn it around, you deliver, and people start saying, you know what? They did it. It's going to be great. Well, we had some interaction with the VTA, the Green Line Extension. It was more of a quality assurance and um, material testing. Um, but the Lero Group has worked with many transit agencies, MTA, New York City Transit, Long Island Railroad, Metro North, um, to name a few. So fully, um, fully engaged with that. Um, look forward to working all of industry uh, because it's a partnership there too. I, in my past, have been successful because of the engineering, architecture world, the contracting world, together, we're going to solve this. And if they know our mission and they know that they have the agency support, we'll see those contracts be delivered. That's one of the things about the contracting. If they understand what's important to us and they build that into their bids and their, their uh, approach, then we're starting off on the right foot. And then if they know that they have the support from the agency, the force account, the, uh, the, the crews, the equipment, then they could deliver and, and schedule accordingly and not build in costs for delays, right? The, and that's what we're going to work on. I'm going to be working very closely with industry. And, and, I, want to be, and I want to be clear, um, you know, we, this is probably the most important appointment I've had to make since I became governor. And I say that knowing how desperate the public is for leadership and a turnaround here. And so, the Lieutenant Governor, myself, Secretary Fiandaka, have been very, very engaged in this process. Again, I want to commend our Interim GM, Jeff Bonneville, for his support and work. And I want to commend the workers, the shifters, the repairmen, the operators, and others who are behind us. We need more of them. This is an important start. This leadership position is important. And I am convinced, and have been convinced, from the day I met him, that Phil Ang was the right person for this job. I have total confidence 
in him and in, in what he brings to this. His engagement, you saw him, he introduced himself to all the workers this morning. He spent time on the rails this morning. He was over at the operations center. You know, and that is something that impressed me from day one was his willingness to just be really hands-on about this and recognize and understand. He certainly understands the challenges facing the system. I think what you hear from him is a spirit of optimism. And that's what we need to, to see. We are never going to get to go. We're never going to get to where we need to be unless we bring that spirit, that aspiration of optimism and of teamwork. And that's what Phil Lang represents. He represents that. And so I'm really excited about that. And uh, he will have the full support of this administration. As you heard him say, when it comes to filling out positions, there are conversations to be had with Secretary Fiandaka and others. Um, our job is to make sure we're supporting getting the right pieces in place to get the job done. That also includes workforce. And I appreciate what Phil said to folks out there in the public. These are great jobs. Morale is down though. This is a time. This is a time of a lot of challenge. And I'm grateful to the people who are working at the T. I want them to stay working at the T. And I want to bring more workers in. And we're going to figure out new and different ways of recruiting and getting workers into this workforce. Um, that has to happen and it's something that we're going to be very intentional about. Certainly work with the GM on it, work with others on this. But I think this is a, it's a really good day. It's a really good day for Boston. It's a really good day for the Commonwealth. Uh, we are turning the page and moving forward in what I think is a really strong direction. I recognize that you know I will be measured every day on, on how things are going, and it's not to say there won't be challenges and bumps along the way, but you know this is a, this is a long time in the making in terms of some of the, the, the lack of investment and support for workforce um, and, and, and operations and, and just capital. And you know people have been doing the very best they, they can. Um, but this is a different day, and so I'm very excited about about this, and grateful to Phil, um, and glad you know he's uh, he's up here, and um, we'll see him um, we'll see him out on the out on the rails. Absolutely. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. If you're not a Yankees fan, are you a Red Sox fan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Mets fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes, still, 1986, still is. <laughs> <laughs>